What's up guys? I'm back with another video and today we're going to be talking about calories, counting calories, entering a cut, trying to lose some body fat because that is what I am currently doing. I am entering a cut. If you don't know what that means, it pretty much means cutting the amount of calories that I'm going to be consuming with the goal in mind to lose body fat. I personally would like to lose about 10 pounds of body fat. I have about two to three months in mind. I'm going to be doing it slowly, taking my time, making sure I'm still getting a good amount of calories in. I won't be killing myself in order to lose that body fat. So I'm going to be kind of explaining how I determine my calories, the process, and all of that just in case you're out there and you're looking to do the same you don't know how to do it properly and you just want a little bit of tips that is what I'm gonna be sharing so I know when it comes to figuring out the amount of calories for yourself and how much you should be eating it can be very confusing a lot of fitness people will share that they're entering a cut but nobody really shares the amount of calories they're eating and I'll tell you why I am going to be sharing with you guys but the reason why is because people will copy and mimic those exact calories thinking they're going to get the same results and that is not the case at all like there is a video circulating across TikTok of Lori Harvey talking about she's eating 1200 calories don't ever eat 1200 calories don't ever and now I see women going and eating 1200 calories I'm gonna be sharing my exact calories carbs all of that but I'm gonna share how you can calculate yours okay how you can calculate your own in order to determine your calories you want to know what your basal metabolic rate and resting metabolic rate so once you know that number then you can determine your calories from there. Now, there are tons of online calculators that you can go and put in your information and it'll give you kind of a guesstimate of how many calories you should be consuming. I personally don't like these online calculators just because, because we are all so different. It goes off your height, your weight, your age, and your gender. Now, me and another woman, the same exact height, the same exact weight and age, we can both be completely different, look completely different, carry a total different amount of body fat, muscle mass. So our calories wouldn't be the same. But what I personally like to do is I like to go see a professional to actually get my RMR, BMR tested. Of course, these tests cost. They do cost you money. This is not something that you have to do all the time. But I believe it's a good investment to just get started. And these tests can range $50 to $150. But I think it's just the most accurate. I personally like to go to universities if you're near a college. But it's usually cheaper if you go to a university. When we were in Denver, I went to a college and I went to go get a metabolic test done. Now I have video footage, which I lost, but I'll insert a clip on what that looks like. But pretty much I woke up in the morning, I was fasted, no food on my stomach. After a full night's sleep, I went in to get this test done, zero exercise. What you do is you lay there, they put this thing over your chest and you pretty much breathe into like this tube and you lay there, you don't move, you don't do anything. So for me laying there doing nothing, my body naturally burns 1,524 calories. Now that we know your RMR, your BMR, we can now start factoring in other things throughout your lifestyle to determine how many calories you need to maintain your current size. So that was my calories to do nothing, to not move like at rest but i do work out about five six days a week we need to factor in that activity level now the numbers to determine your activity level which i will insert on the screen so you can see what that looks like so you have the sedentary person this is someone who has little to no exercise you don't work out you have a desk job you're not really moving that much you would multiply your RMR by 1.2. Mild activity level, you still kind of have a desk job, you don't really do much, maybe you exercise one to three times a week, you would multiply your number by 1.375. The moderate activity level, now this person who works out maybe three to four times a week, that you'll multiply by 1.55. Now we start to get into the heavy exercise. This is the five to seven days a week. You would multiply your number by 1.7 and then we have the extreme level. This can be someone who works out every day and does like a construction job. They're just constantly moving. That's the extreme. You would multiply by 1.9. So you take your calories, your RMR, 
and you multiply that by these different activity levels, that will give you your maintenance calorie, how much you can eat to just remain the same size you are. I wouldn't say I move a lot at home, but I am in the gym for about an hour and a half, six days a week. So I would say I'm pretty heavy on the activity level. So I would take my 1,524 and I would times it by 1.7, which would give me 2,590 calories. That is my amount of calories to maintain my current size, 2,590. We can take that number and we can add, if I wanted to put on some size or subtract, like we are entering a cut in order to lose some size. The max amount of calories you want to cut is 500. That is the max, the max. You can go from two, 300, you can gradually reduce, but the max amount you want to remove from your maintenance is 500. Take my 2590 and subtract 500 calories. Me entering my cut, I'm going to be eating 2,090 calories. Now that you know your calories, you know where you're going to be cutting, I like to use my fitness pal, the app. There is a section in my fitness pal where you go and put in your goals. It does the whole thing, your height, your weight. My fitness pal will have you starving, okay? It is not like, do not follow the calories that my fitness pal provides you. Don't do it. I'm going to go to my goals and we're going to type in. 90 calories. So here, once you put in your calories, it's gonna give you the total of 100%. So the 100% totals out the amount of calories that you have. So you can play around with these numbers. If you wanna eat more carbs, then obviously you adjust the protein and fat. If you wanna eat less carbs, then you adjust the protein and fat. I prefer to go 40, 30, 30. 30% 30 of my total calories were come from fat, 30% of my total calories were come from protein, and 40% of my total calories were come from carbs. This is my starting point entering my cut. This is my starting point and I will stay here for probably a month. Now I can go to my diary and here I will add in my meals, my snacks and all of that and make sure it totals up to hit my numbers. I wanna hit my protein numbers, I wanna hit my fat numbers, I wanna hit my carb numbers. Do not try to stay below this number. You're already in a calorie deficit. You do not want to eat below this. So I personally prefer to count calories. Um, I prefer to count my macros. I know it's not for everyone and that is okay. Do you have to count your calories and your macros in order to lose weight? No, you don't. You don't have to. But if you feel like you've been training for a long time or you feel like you've been trying to lose fat for a long time and your body's not budging, I recommend tracking. I recommend tracking your food. I, I recommend making sure you're hitting your calories because a lot of times people are eating more than they think they are. Okay, little things add up that you don't realize or you might be possibly way under eating, which can also be a huge problem. This is why it's not good to diet for a long time. When you're under eating for too long, your body will start to adjust to those calories. That's why you wanna kind of gradually lower it. So I will eat like this and I will be in a deficit for the next maybe two to three months and then, and then I'm going back to raising my calories. And also throughout the process, I'll probably be taking little diet breaks here and there. So every three weeks, I'll go and eat at maintenance just to give myself a little diet break and then right back into it. Another option is if you don't have maybe the access to go get one of these tests done, or maybe you don't have the money to get a test done, that is okay. I'll enter in a website down below that you can go and use. I compared these numbers to the test that I had done, and it was not that far off. I try to keep this as simple as possible, but if you're still lost, if you still have any questions, please just leave them down in the comment section and I will try to get to as many questions that you might have. But I will be shooting a video of a full day of eating and showing you exactly how I track my calories and, and how I enter in my food and weigh my food to reach these numbers. So stay tuned for that video. Um, it'll definitely go hand in hand with this one so you know how to properly track your calories. Stay tuned, I will be sharing updates along the way. Um, I am taking videos and pictures I already have. I've kind of already been in this, but yeah.
Don't forget, any questions, leave them down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.